Yeah. Um, you start the you, you, you didn't inherit a, a, a magazine. You start King Magazine, yeah. Rides Magazine, Hip Hop yeah. Soul. Then you go to work with with Russell Simmons, yeah. another icon in 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 fashion, in hip hop, in music, in culture. Over at yeah. Global Grind, back to vibe somewhere in there. I know I forgot. Yeah. Um, Respect Magazine. I have Respect in there too. You've had wow. one hell of a ride. Like, like, and wow, that's why man. I asked you earlier, did you know it was going to be this big when you started? Because now, now you have the title and you've had the title of editor-in-chief for so many of these different magazines and, and, mm -hmm. and publications and dot-coms that I just mentioned. Right. You, did like, this is one hell of a ride. It really is, man. It really is. When I think about it in total, um, or like when someone asks me, like, yo, do you know such and such? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my man. Or do you know such and such? Oh, yeah, that's my homie. That's why, oh, yeah, I worked with her before. And it's like, wow, man. Like, And it's also wow because it wasn't like fleeting moments. I had like years with different different brands, you know, where I was able to make my imprint and, and um at intricate points within each brand. You know, Double XL, I was there, you know, at the beginning from the first issue. And then So you were there from day one. From like almost day one. It was like they started they started putting it together like early ninety seven. Mm -hmm. And then they had the preview issue. I was there before they I was there when they finished the preview issue and they were they didn't even send it out yet. That's what, when I had my with us? What was your position? Uh, when I first went, that first issue, I was a freelancer. That was like my first check. That was my first. Reginald Dennis and all of those guys that put Double XL together. It's the uh, Jay Z. It's a split cover with Jay Z on the on the cover with a cigar and Master P on the other cover. And I did I did three music reviews and a feature on um, enhanced CDs because they were like the new thing you would you would buy like say uh exhibit or mob deep from loud uh, loud records you get the cd you could play it in your in your cd player but then if you put it in your computer drive um your cd player you can click on a little button and it'll take you to their website yep so i started ranking all the um artists that was that, that were like forward thinking during that time doing that and man oh man when i got that first check I just knew, I was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm doing this right here. I, <laughs> and at the time, I didn't even have a bank account. And I had to go cash it out, check cash and <laughs> <laughs> Old school style. That's how crazy it was, man. But I was so excited. And, and I just knew that this was the start of something big. I love that you said you didn't even have a, check, uh, 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 a bank account because it just, again, establishes you didn't come from mm -hmm. from means you didn't come from mm -hmm. you you came from brooklyn like like from brooklyn, just man. like so many i mean and there are brooklyn usas all across america they are low yep. income poverty ridden neighborhoods and the fact that you can rise out of those circumstances and become what you have become i love the fact that that you, you know even without thinking about it yeah, I didn't have banking i, I went to a check cashing place cuz that's still yep. some people are cashing their checks to this day. To this day, man. To this day. And and when I go back and I think about those times and what I learned, what what ends up happening as a journalist, most journalists, I, I don't know how much they'll they'll talk about it. When you go and you interview these big time rap stars and big black executive dudes and they're they're talking to you about business, you start to soak that up. As much as you're taking it out to the people you're starting to soak it up too. So now you're starting to get a lot more entrepreneurial because you're talking to people that are getting information and that are setting like businesses into the millions and billions. You start looking around like, okay, some of this information I can store for myself That's and right. start to start to move around. So now, yes, you're starting to invest. You're starting to get your, your bank account stuff. You're starting to look at, you know, uh, housing um, developments and things of that nature, man. Like, it does give you a certain kind of education that you wouldn't get through school because you're dealing with people that are dealing in big business. And my major thing was 
I'm going to learn from that. And then I'm also going to put that out there for the people to learn from as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Sticking to double XL. Yeah. Obviously, you get to work under some of the greats. Um, Elliot Wilson is there at that time, correct? Oh, this is so crazy. So when I got at double XL in 97, um, so I worked from the first issue on to about the end of 99. And that's when we do like the great day in Harlem with all like- Hold on, we gonna get there because your part is so much history. <laughs> crazy, man, it's crazy. So we do all of that stuff. And then that's when the internet stuff started coming through, like all the different brands. And then Elliot, I think he had left um, either Ego Trip or The Source. I can't remember. I think he left The Source at, at the time. And then they hired him as the new editor in chief. I ended up leaving when he was coming. And we spoke real quick, but the opportunity to work in a, in a company that was connected to Diddy was just too big for me. I was like, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And I left Double XL in 99 to go work on Hook.com. Got you. Um, I, I, you, you, you alluded to it. I think, I think it's important just for a cultural bit of the conversation. Mm -hmm. You are involved in two extremely uh, important cultural moments in hip hop. Number yep. one, Great Day in Harlem cover. Wow. Also, I guess what's commonly known as the XXL um, the freshman. freshman. Yeah. Can you talk to us about both and how those two, oh, well. what, first off, what was the experience like and, and how they even came to fruition? Are these um, yeah, man. You know, just things that you worked on or were they part of your brainchild? So the um, Great Day in Harlem, which is to me um, one of the greatest magazine covers ever. I don't care what genre. To be but able to get... Who does not know what it is, please describe to him. What oh. is the Great Day in Harlem out, um, magazine cover? So basically that magazine cover was an anniversary and honoring aspect of the cover that came out 30 years prior um, or, or 40 years prior with uh, Art Kane. He took a, 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 a historical jazz group shot with all the greats, Dizzy Gillespie and everybody. They, they all congregated on this uh, monumental photo on 126th Street in front of just, you know, brownstones on that block. And the idea when I got to Double XL in the early days was to recreate that with all the all the rappers that were out at the time in 98. Um, the idea came up in 97, I believe, um, with, the, with the editorial team. And then when, when I started having say so, and I had a position, it was our team like, yo, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. And our editor-in-chief at the time, Sheena Lester, who came from Rap Pages on the West Coast, she was, she was like, yo, I'm going to make this happen. This could happen. And when she did her and Leslie Smalls on the PR side and then all of us just calling all our, our uh, connections in, in PR teams and labels, over 270 rappers showed up from all over the country, oh man. Oh, my God. And everybody congregated on 126th Street. I'm talking Shaq, uh, Russell Simmons, Andre Harrell, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Mac 10 and all of them. Naughty by Nature came. And the last person to walk on that block while everybody is in position was Run from Run DMC. It was almost like, it was like you couldn't even write it any better to see 200, over 200 and some rappers Screaming, run! <laughs> thinking they saying run, but we saying run because we was losing the sun. <laughs> so just to see him come up on there, he was like, "I ain't tripping in front of y'all. Y'all ain't getting me." And everybody cracking up, man. It was like, it was like seeing all your superheroes in one place, and all your superheroes are seeing their superheroes. It was just like just me going back to that. It was just one of those moments that was just so monumental and so incredibly dope for the culture. And that was in 98. Icon um, iconic. Yeah, iconic, iconic moment. And then with um, the freshman issue, I usually, um, I know I came up with the term and I started it where it's currently...
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.